what do you think might be a beautiful thing that comes out of this? Like, what is there a hope that, like, a little inkling, a little fire of hope you have about our time right now? Yeah, I think one thing is coming to understand that the freaks, weirdos, mutants, and other uh, ne'er do wells, uh, sometimes referred to as grifters, I like that one, grifters, uh, <laughs> and gadflies were very often the earliest people on the coronavirus. That's a really interesting question. Why was that? And it seems to be that they had already paid such a social price that they weren't going to be beaten up by being um, told that, oh my God, you're xenophobic. You just hate China, <laughs> you know, or wow, you sound like a conspiracy theorist. Um, so if you'd already paid those prices, you were free to think about this. And everyone in an institutional framework was terrified that they didn't want to be seen as the alarmist, the um, chicken little. And so that's why you have this confidence where, you know, de Blasio says, you know, get on with your lives, get back in there and celebrate Chinese New Year in Chinatown, despite coronavirus. It's like, okay, really? So you just always thought everything would automatically be okay if you if you adapted, sorry, if you adopted that posture. So you think uh, this time reveals the weakness of our institutions and reveals the strength of our gadflies and the weirdos and the... No, not necessarily the strength, but the 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 value of freedom, like a different way of saying it would be, wow, even your gadflies and your grifters were able to beat your institutional folks because your institutional folks were playing with a giant mental handicap. So just imagine like we were in the story of Harrison Bergeron by Vonnegut and our smartest people were all subjected to uh, distracting noises every seven seconds. Well, they would be functionally much dumber because they couldn't continue a thought through all the disturbance. So in some sense, that's a little bit like what belonging to an institution is, is that if you have to make a public statement, of course the Surgeon General is gonna be the worst. Because they're, they're, they're just playing with too much of a handicap. There are too many institutional players who are like, don't screw us up. And so the person has to say something wrong. We're gonna back propagate a falsehood. And this is very interesting. Some of my socially oriented friends say, Eric, I don't understand what you're on about. Of course masks work, but you know what they're trying to do. They're trying to get us not to buy up the masks for the doctors. And I think, okay, so you imagine that we can just create scientific fiction at will so that you can run whatever social program you want. This is what I, you know, my point is get out of my lab, get out of the lab. You don't belong in the lab. You're not meant for the lab. You're constitutionally incapable of being around a lab. You need to leave the lab. 